Welcome to our channel. Don't forget to subscribe and put likes, because your support is important for us. And here we go. As per a senior Ukrainian defense official cited by John Feng in Newsweek, more than half of the 1 million artillery shells transferred from North Korea to Russia are reportedly faulty. Vadim Skibitsky, the deputy head of Ukraine's main intelligence directorate, GUR, revealed that the Kremlin sought aid from its secretive Asian ally to bolster Russia's limited arms production capabilities, yielding mixed results. Skibitsky's comments, shared with Interfax Ukraine news agency on February 23, indicate, based on available data, Russia has received 1.5 million rounds of ammunition from the DPRK. However, these munitions originate from the 1970s and 1980s. Roughly half of them are non-functional, while the rest require restoration or thorough inspection before deployment. According to Bloomberg, Satellite imagery captured between October and December 2023 depicted numerous shipping containers being loaded onto and offloaded from Russian vessels at North Korea's Najin and Russia's Dunay ports, suggesting a continuous exchange of military supplies between the two nations. This collaboration purportedly empowers Moscow to sustain pressure on Ukraine amidst the ongoing conflict, with Western nations accusing North Korea of aiding Russia's military endeavors. In October, the United States, South Korea, and Japan jointly confirmed North Korea's provision of arms and military equipment to Russia for use against Ukraine. In retaliation, Pyongyang sought military support from Moscow, a claim denied by both Russia and North Korea. The shipments allegedly encompass substantial quantities of artillery shells, including 120mm mortars, 122mm and 152mm artillery shells, and 122mm rockets compatible with Russian weaponry deployed in Ukraine. This persistent military collaboration between Russia and North Korea, and Iran for drones, despite international sanctions and widespread censure, underscores the intricate dynamics of international relations and the complexities in addressing the Ukraine conflict. That's all for now. See you later.